Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this modular arithmetic for cryptography part 6 video, I'll be discussing multiplicative inverse, modular multiplicative inverse, modular multiplicative inverse using a naive method and modular multiplicative inverse using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So let's get started. First we look at what is multiplicative inverse and then modular multiplicative inverse. The multiplicative inverse of a number is a number when multiplied by the original number gives the product 1. The multiplicative inverse of a is denoted by a to the power minus 1 or 1 over a. Let's look at some examples. Multiplicative inverse of 4 is 1 over 4. Multiplicative inverse of 10 is 1 over 10. Multiplicative inverse of 55 is 1 over 55 because we get value 1. So it is very easy. But what is multiplicative inverse in modular arithmetic? Let's look at it. Modular multiplicative inverse is different from the multiplicative inverse where the mod n of the product of a number and its multiplicative inverse equals 1 as shown in figure. Let's look at an example. Here a equals 2 and n equals 5 and we need to find the modular multiplicative inverse t of a. Write values in the above relation. Let's assume t equals 3 and calculate the mod. Now 6 mod 5 is 1 which is the condition as illustrated in our diagram therefore 3 is the modular multiplicative inverse of 2. So how we define it? If n be a positive integer and a be an integer that is co-prime to n then the modular multiplicative inverse of a is an integer t which satisfies the relation a times t mod n equals 1. Let's look at a simple method to find the modular multiplicative inverse. A naive method to find the modular multiplicative inverse t of a given number a is to consider all numbers in range 1 to n minus 1 and then check if each number whether it is the modular multiplicative inverse or not by calculating its mod which we are going to apply here. In this example if n equals 11, a equals 4 then find the modular multiplicative inverse t of a. First, find the GCD of 11 and 4, which is 1, therefore n and a are co-prime. Then, find the modular multiplicative inverse t of a, which satisfies the relation a times t mod n equals 1. Here, we start with the value of t equals 1, 2, 3, and then check which number satisfies the relation 4 times t mod 11 equals 1. So, let's check t equals 1. 4 times 1 mod 11 is 4. Now let's check t equals 2. 4 times 2 mod 11 equals 8. Then check t equals 3. So 4 times 3 mod 11 equals 1. And modular multiplicative inverse using the extended Euclidean algorithm which is an efficient method. So how we are going to calculate the modular multiplicative inverse t? Using the extended Euclidean algorithm with Bijou's lemma or identity where we will find the Bijou's coefficients s and t. So why we are finding Bijou's coefficients s and t? Because the integer t guaranteed by Bijou's lemma is the multiplicative inverse of a modulo n that is a times t mod n equals 1. This is the reason we are using this method to calculate modular multiplicative inverse t. I've already explained Bijou's lemma, Euclidean algorithm and extended Euclidean algorithm in the previous video. Here we are going to perform the complete calculation based on the extended Euclidean algorithm into two parts because it is easy to understand the complete computation and separate the extended Euclidean algorithm from the standard algorithm. In part 1, we'll compute GCD of n and a using the standard Euclidean algorithm and verify whether the GCD is 1 or not. If GCD is 1, means n and a are co-prime and we can move on to the part 2 to find multiplicative inverse. If the GCD is not 1, means n and a are not co-prime and we cannot find multiplicative inverse, so we'll not do part 2. That is the extended Euclidean algorithm. So in part 2, 
if n and a are co prime then we use the extended euclidean algorithm with bijou's lemma or identity to calculate bijou's coefficients s and t where t is the multiplicative inverse of a which we have already discussed why now we can verify the value of t in the relation x time t mod n equals 1 let's do the complete computation using the extended algorithm start with the first part find the gcd of n and a using the standard euclidean algorithm which i've already explained in the previous video but we'll do it again to compute the gcd of n and a and write the division of n and a in the form of euclidean algorithm n equals q times a plus r but here we need, we also need to rearrange the equation to make the remainder 11 as the subject so we are going to use this rearranged equation for the backward substitution in the extended algorithm now move on to the next division step and we'll do the same rearrangement of equation in every division step next division step and finally we have got the gcd equals 1 which shows the two numbers n and a are co prime and this satisfied the required condition to calculate the multiplicative inverse of a so let's move on to the part two the part two is the extended algorithm in which we will utilize all the rearranged equations for backward substitution we start with the last gcd equation of the subject one i have rewritten the equation and multiplied one to four in order to make this equation in the form of bijou's lemma for finding coefficient s and t our second subject is three in reverse order so substitute the expression for three and just expand this expression keep this expression in the form of coefficients our third subject is four in reverse order so substitute the expression for four and just expand this expression again we'll continue this backward substitution process until the last subject which is 11 here once we expand this expression we'll get the equation with coefficients s and t of a and b when doing substitution perform positive and negative operations carefully finally we can verify the value of t in the relation a times t mod n equals 1 which is true so the multiplicative inverse value is correct this is an additional step and we can omit it once we got multiplicative inverse we'll use this multiplicative inverse calculation in rsa encryption algorithm later this concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video